This tutorial is called Paint by Color. It goes heavily in depth with many other things besides painting, so I'm going to focus mainly on painting. But first, let's show you a little bit of codes that I have. I have some global variables. I don't always recommend using global variables because they can slow down a game, but this game is really small, and so I just put them in there. I have it called global.gems earned and global.score earned. So if I had 20 levels, globals would keep track of the score and the gems throughout those 20 levels. But I only got one level, so it's not really necessary to have them. Let's open up the room and here we go. Here's my little paint. So I have this picture and it's going to fade away and then it's going to reappear missing some colors and my job will be to paint in the missing co colors. I can dip my brush in a color and paint away. Now you'll notice that there's little teeny dots and this is the reason I want to show you this first is these dots are invisible in game but when I paint the correct color on the dots those dots will disappear and therefore giving me points and if I fill in all the dots of a certain color then I get some gems. So let's hit play. Here's an instruction screen. Here we go. I got my little scene here. Let's just wait a minute till it fades away. When it reappears you'll have a little timer here and someone was asking me better how to do that so I'll go ahead and explain that later too. I'm going to just click color and let's see, I'll try brown. Now you notice as I'm painting, it paints fairly well. It's all it is is little dots like painting over each other to make it look smooth. Now I didn't get any score gems, so I must be painting the wrong color. Let's try orange. Aha! Now I'm getting some colors. Okay, if you heard the volume, it was a little guy that said Zumbaye, and it told me that I got five gems. Now I'm not going to finish this puzzle just so that you can enjoy it a little bit when you download this tutorial. I would download this tutorial because there's a lot of things happening here, and you could learn more than just painting, and that's at roencia.com under the document section. So let's just take a look first at that timer to get that out of the way. Uh, I have a little object here called Color Me Text. It doesn't need any sprites. And I have a timer and I set that to 90 and I have a countdown. And the countdown is used in conjunction with the alarm and to control the counting down of the timer. So as long as my time left is more than zero, because zero means that you lost, and as long as that count time timer is equal to zero, it subtracts one from the time, sets the alarm, and it puts the countdown. And I have to have this little countdown available so the time doesn't minus indefinitely because it's in the step event, and it's controlled through the alarm. Now, under the draw event, I set a font and I have this command, draw text color. Uh, it would be best knowing how these kind of things work if you go to the help. And suffice it to say, I have this, this uh, visual wording variable called timer, and I have a string variable, and the string is used under my time left variable that I create in the create event. So when I run this, this is not going to say the words time left. It's going to say the words 60 or 90. And I mean, I could put this to 200 and that's what it would say. So that's the best I can explain this. This, you might have to look at it if you don't understand anymore. can't understand it from that. Okay, let's uh, look under how I paint in these colors real quick. I don't like my tutorials to go on forever. I uh, I have some events. I always have to create some variables that control everything. Variables are like the most important things you can have in a game. And I have a color pick variable and it's equal to zero. What that means is I don't have a color. My mouse dot, which happens to be invisible and it follows the quill, doesn't have any color. 
If my color pick was equal to 1, then I'd be coloring red. If it was equal to 2, I'd be coloring blue, and so on. And that is all controlled under the step event. So let me just, as you're looking at this, let me just explain what is happening. I use the distance to object command and I use the mouse check button command. I could use the collision to event over here, but I, I like using distance to object. So if my mouse dot is smaller than one distance to my color pot, one which is red, the color red, and I hit the mouse button, then what happens is my color pick variable is now equal to one. It's no longer zero. And because it is equal to one, scroll down here, now when I hit the button, it paints color dot one, which happens to be red. Let's scroll down. Same thing is happening here, but this time when I hit the color pot two, which is blue, scroll down here, I paint color dot two. And that's basically how this works. And to take a closer look, please download the tutorial. And I hope that you can use this in your games.